Hi, it's Mike again with Ugtastic. I'm here at SCNA. I'm sitting down with Patrick Welsh. Patrick is a uh, agile coach and uh, tester. I kind of said uh, like a holistic agilist. Uh, but he's yesterday we had a kind of interesting conversation, and he brought up the topic of a network weaver. Well, first, thanks for sitting down with me. But what is what is a network weaver? What is, what does that word mean? So uh, the term, uh, uh, as introduced to me, means something that people kind of either are or not, you mm -hmm. know? So natural programmers are people who can't prevent themselves from programming, right. or they'll start to go a little stir crazy. Yeah. And uh, I am a natural network weaver, uh, and I'll, just, I'll describe the algorithm, which is actually kind of simple. It's a simple algorithm that network weavers can't prevent themselves from following, and it goes right. like this. They join communities, and mm -hmm. they join communities relatively easy, they, easily. They, they find it easy to meet people and to become part of communities in some way. And they're comfortable joining lots of communities mm -hmm. and they keep track of what different people in different communities love and are good at and work hard on. And they tend to remember when there are opportunities for people in different communities to connect and they make those connections. And so what ends up happening is that they cause uh, a cross-pollination to occur. Right. So both communities that have members cross back and forth end up being helped by yeah. the, that fresh blood and fresh ideas. Yeah, so so you don't have the the island effect and, and then you have Yes. And up everybody looks a, a little bit too much alike and the foreheads yes. are too far out. But um but uh, <laughs> uh, but by by bringing in the new genetic material, the new ideas exactly so, yeah. they distribute and then everybody can be healthy and have a good immune system. Right. <laughs> yeah. But so so that relates to, you know, technical user communities in a way to me that if we share ideas and go to different user groups and, and reach out for like, hey, I'm a Rubyist, but I want to do a JavaScript group, mm -hmm. or I wanted to even go even further out and go to a .NET meeting, something I'm not sure. even doing. Those are classic examples, by the way, and I have helped weave connections between uh, communities in each of those areas that were mostly insular, right. and uh, you know, it turns out that a lot of Rubyists don't know that there's this beautiful dynamically typed functional programming language hiding deep within the dysfunction of JavaScript. Right. And if you frame it just correctly to them and hook yeah. them up with the right person, then it becomes easier and more fun for them to learn JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And JavaScript programmers can learn that there's this Ruby community in which there is much less of the danger and, and uh, noise, much mm -hmm. better signal to noise ratio in this other language. Both people in both of those different communities end up being grateful for the comparison and for the connection and for learning those different things. At least that's how, that's how it works well when people are sufficiently passionate. Right. And it also it kind of makes me wonder about uh, with the kind of movement to seeing more software craftsmanship oriented groups. Um, you know, we're here at SCNA, which is getting more and more popular every year, uh, and, and we're seeing more software craftsmanship um, themed user groups where they're not tied to a specific platform, specific language, yes. just that we have this kind of similar ideals, sure. we'd like to be more like this way, but we have different ways of approaching that problem. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're more open to having that, I think, network weaving where you have the PHP guy come in and the C guy and the guy who does Java. Sure. And I should say, and probably the, the Ruby gal, just to be... Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely, yeah, sure. And, but, but um, uh, you know, you have a mixture of, of different ideas and, and, and genders and, and racial backgrounds coming together, and instead of thinking about, well, how can I identify with people that have this one specific trait that they share with me? How can I mix with a lot of different people mm -hmm. and, and, and get new ideas and fresh ideas and maybe a new perspective? I mean, is that kind of like a natural, organic way that this concept of the network weaving is becoming more of a, of a concept in, in technical communities or? Well, I would say it's always been there and it's, it's, so it's a kind of minority uh, uh, prejudice, if you will. I cannot prevent myself from joining different communities. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to joining communities, learning about communities, uh, learning how people learn, um, their definitions of success and failure, what they're courageous about, mm -hmm. um, uh, the things that they consider important. 
And you know, when you mention a craftsmanship movement that's in software right now, um, I see all these threads that kind of cross communities that have to do with uh, things like accountability and professionalism and mentoring mm -hmm. and fresh blood and uh, uh, those things are easy for me to talk, easier for me to talk about with some authority and experience mm -hmm. the more communities I've uh, right. participated in. But I can't, for me it's, it's kind of an obsession, it's an addiction. I know a lot of people who really want to concentrate deeply in a single place mm -hmm. in a relatively narrow community where there's usually plenty to learn and know, right? right? And they want to stay there and they want to learn deeply. And I tend to move more broadly and I, you know, sometimes sit for a while and mull and concentrate, but I mostly move around because that seems to be the way I add the most value. It's just the natural yeah. mode for me. I, I struggle with that, that basic uh, thing. I was a .NET developer in a, in a previous life, I like to say, but I was looking at going into Ruby and basically leaving behind it was kind of an all or nothing move. It was mm. move over to Ruby and just totally focus on becoming a, a FOSS platform developer or stick with uh, .NET, which I had already invested a lot in. Right. And then the decision that, that kind of crystallized was deep or wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and some people, um, like what you're describing as a social networker, likes to go wide, likes to get a broad spectrum of experience and maybe just go just deep enough well, deep, deep enough to understand. Deep enough to understand what people yeah. uh, what people care about most. Yeah, but if you're sometimes another type of personality, and is there a word for that type of personality? That is would be so that the social networker tends to span across. Is there a concept for the person's like I want to stay in this one vertical and, and just dig deep into that? Well, so I mean, there are different uh, personality classification systems, mm -hmm. and some of this, I suppose, is more introvert. An extrovert. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of it is um, uh, people whose thinking tends to be in shorter bursts, mm -hmm. like mine. Um, my thinking is constantly interrupted by fresh ideas, mm -hmm. and I work very hard to become more grounded and to concentrate more and to listen better. But my natural way of thinking and communicating and learning is with lots and lots of inputs and lots right. and lots of outputs. Um, so chatty thinking. Yes, exactly, which can be you know, inconvenient for me and inconvenient for people I work with, mm -hmm. but it has this cross-pollinating kind of uh, broadcasting value to it. Um, I keep track of a lot of people, so I like to say I'm not a great programmer, but I have one of the best collections of friends who yeah. are great programmers <laughs> ever. And you have binders full of programmers. They, well, they're, it's all in my head and in my iPhone. But, I, I, but in fact... A little it, election joke there. It, yes, exactly. So I... Uh, I love I love it when an awesome programmer with an interesting idea doesn't know about another awesome programmer in whatever tech stack or language or country or you know whatever uh, doesn't know about another programmer in another community with a, with a related idea right. and I can connect them to each other and it's it's not at all confined to programmers I mean I'm, right. I'm members of lots of other kinds of communities yeah it's a human thing and that's really what exactly. the important so. thing to remember in these technical communities is we've picked a topic but we're all people yeah and and that's one of the things I, I like about um, with uh, the the software craftsmanship is we're encouraged to look outside of our own community and look at what other people are sure. doing and how how the, the carpenter is a craftsman, how the dentist is a craftsman. Sure. You know, uh, that, that there's, that even my barber, which I have to see more often, is, is a craftsman in, in itself, uh, you know, because he has a skill and he practices it and, and teaches other people. And sure. They have a, even kind of a mentoring. And he's a little bit of an old-timey barber. Yeah. And an uh, old-timey barber. <laughs> but, uh, but that we have so much to learn from each other as people, mm -hmm. And that we shouldn't just focus on our one little uh, niche. Well, I, I don't know. I think we don't have to rely on individuals to, to master every variety of learning and interaction. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if we rely on balanced enough communities mm -hmm. to take care of that. Not everyone should have to be a network weaver. Right. And I'm frankly... Well, yeah, sometimes you just need somebody who can knuckle down and get a job done. Absolutely. So, you know, a balanced software development team frequently has people like me who serve in roles of intermediating between developers and testers. I do a lot of that. And intermediating between uh, developers and testers and product owners and operations people. 
Um, I care about every one of those different uh, silos and roles and, and their definitions of mastery. I'm addicted to the notion of mastery mm -hmm. generally. So the guy this morning who got me the bacon, yeah, you know, that guy was obviously a master chef. Yeah. And he admitted it to me. Yeah. And I enjoyed meeting him just for a, a minute or two and took his picture holding his yeah. beautiful tray of perfectly cooked bacon. Yeah. Because I was as pleased to meet a master chef yeah. out of nowhere as I would be to, to meet a master Ruby test driver. Yeah, if, and if just, that makes sense. Just so the, the people are watching his little yeah. context is we're at the SCNA conference and there's the buffet of of, of, of all the uh, bread, all the bread that they are, they're always Hel at the healthy conference. food. Yeah. yeah, all the healthy food. Right. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, the the people who's preparing, uh, well, the chef, out, the, the lead chef, chef out. happens to be. Well, you wouldn't know that. Just you know, just yeah, comes right. out yeah. and uh, asks if everything's okay, and 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 Patrick just says. I'd really love some bacon. And the chef says, and I'm standing there for it. And he just says, come with me. And then they both run off. And next thing you know, there's a tweet that got some bacon from my new friend. And yeah, you know, so, but, and that's a perfect network yeah. weaving moment. That's the thing I cannot yeah. help doing is introducing myself to new people, mm -hmm. regardless of, you know, cab drivers, right. chefs, software craftsmen, barbers. I, right. you know, I got my hair cut. Very recently, <laughs> and, and the guys who cut my hair are these like crazy 1950s slick back. You know, yeah. they have their own culture. They all race hot rods yeah. and play electric guitar. I, you know, if I find an opportunity to talk to anybody who is obviously passionate about anything they do, I will. I'll take advantage of it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for You're taking the time to sit down. Thank, thank you, Mike. It.